now return to Desert Tech on Modern Marvels. Now with water and power and lots of inexpensive land, Phoenix had nearly all the basic building blocks for a modern community. Except that it was a desert with unbearably hot summers. So when air conditioning was introduced decades later, after World War II, it made all the difference in the world. Gettle Air Conditioning was the first to adapt Willis Carrier's 1902 invention to the Phoenix area. Its units weren't cheap, but they did the job. An air conditioner is basically a refrigerator without the insulated box. A compressor pressurizes a refrigerant, usually free on gas. The pressure forces it to heat up. This hot gas runs through a set of coils in order to dissipate its heat, condensing it into a liquid. The liquefied Freon then runs through an expansion valve, where it evaporates to become cold, low-pressure Freon gas. This cold gas runs through a set of coils that allows the gas to absorb heat and cool down the air inside the building. In the 1960s, air conditioning technology like this became mass-produced and affordable. That changed everything for Phoenix. People no longer perceived its desert climate as a drawback. We have uh, three months a year here where the average high temperature is well above 100 degrees. Uh, air conditioning, today, uh, most of us wake up in an air-conditioned home, get into an air-conditioned car, go to our air-conditioned offices, and it may be 110 or even 120 degrees outside, but we live in a world that's forever 75 degrees Fahrenheit. You could relieve weather this heat, and then the rest of the year it was spectacular out, and so you were happy to be here. But was it too much of a good thing? With a population that rose from over 300,000 in 1950 to over 3 million by 2000, the climate of Phoenix actually changed. Population growth has really created two changes in our climate. First is humidity because of the swimming pools and, and the irrigated golf courses and front lawns and things like that. We've created several points higher average hum humidity here in Phoenix than, than originally existed. Phoenix's second climate change is a phenomenon called the heat island effect. All the heat from the solar radiation during the day is stored in our parking lots and in our roads and it just emanates overnight. And one of the big problems that has is that the nighttime temperature of many of our desert cities has gone up as much as 15 degrees Fahrenheit from what it used to be. As the 21st century dawned, Phoenix had become trapped in a vicious cycle. That 15 degrees has got to be swallowed by air conditioning. And that air conditioning, of course, lets even more heat out into that night air. So we've got a very serious problem there. While these problems didn't develop overnight, they were anticipated as early as 1970. There was concern in some circles that if the result of all this desert tech was a generally flat urban sprawl, then perhaps some rethinking was in order. This led to the creation of an experimental alternative community called Arcosanti, located 70 miles north of Phoenix. A collection of eclectic, densely packed buildings. It was steeped in the kind of desert tech employed by the ancient Mesopotamians. Low tech, but effective. The sun is rising out here to the northeast, arcs high in the sky, and sets over here to the northwest, so the entire building shades right out to this curve, in fact. It is passive solar architecture. The building is really working with the annual regimen of the sun to create an environment that is a warm environment for the winter and then a shaded environment for the summer. Marco Santi was the brainchild of Italian-born architect Paolo Soleri, who felt Phoenix was conquering the desert instead of adapting to it. Phoenix is indifferent to the desert, so I had my alternative, which is, I call it the lean alternative. Among other things, Soleri felt the need for air conditioning could be minimized by construction materials that could offset extreme desert temperatures. In the desert, the, the primary surface that you want to uh, be aware of uh, for insulation is going to be the roof, the horizontal surface, especially in the heat of the summer. This has about four inches of uh, sprayed foam insulation, which is very effective at mitigating overheating in a concrete structure. Besides adapting to the sun, Arcosanti's oddly shaped roofs also maximize water conservation. Water captured during sudden downpours drains down to collection vessels. 
What we're trying to do here is to use what water we have responsibly. Despite its common sense approach to desert tech, Arcosanti failed to catch on, never growing beyond a community of several dozen people. Meanwhile, Phoenix continued to explode, but its very success led to serious water issues. Problems developed in Phoenix's aquifer, where underground water was trapped millions of years ago. Phoenix obtained a considerable amount of their water resources from groundwater. Historically, over time, this has resulted in rather significant drawdowns in the aquifer, ranging anywhere between 50 and 100 feet. This has caused subsidence in some parts of the valley. For example, over at Luke Air Force Base, it's dropped nearly 18 feet. In other words, Phoenix is sinking and has been for decades. Arizona pretty much was persuaded or forced by the federal government to come to grips with this. And it instigated a really innovative uh, law called the Groundwater Management Act that in fact put all sorts of constraints on new farming. It put incentives for water conservation among the cities. And it set a goal of balancing natural recharge with extraction rate. Man should always strive to be in balance with the desert because it is a challenging environment to live in. We are increasing our population size and therefore the carrying capacity of the land. And so we need to be smart about it. 